The Vikings looking forward to getting their second win of the season and helping me break down this upcoming Sunday's matchup with the Bears is our friend, Miss Courtney Cronin from ESPN. And Courtney, uh, these are two one and four teams. And just being objective here, you know this Vikings team very well. You cover the Bears now. How do you see this matchup going on Sunday? Yeah, it's the bottom of the NFC North. I don't think that anybody would have thought that the Vikings would be in this situation going into week six, but here they are with the identical record uh, as a Chicago Bears team that's in year two of this rebuild and coming off a really emotional, important win, their first win in nearly a calendar year. So both teams, oddly, in the same sort of footing right now, but certainly there's differences within you know the quarterback experience mm -hmm. and the way these two defenses look where you can point to certain advantages here for both the Vikings and the Bears trying to level the playing field but it's it's tough because this Bears team at least the, like the last couple of weeks from what we've seen they're a team that's been trying to climb out of a really tough start, an 0-4 start. They go on the road to Washington to get a 20-point win. So there's things that they hope to build off of, but they know that when you've got a, your second division, second division game coming in the first six weeks of the season, mm -hmm. you've got some ground to make up there, and they certainly know that they have a long way to go to getting to do that. On the offensive side of the ball for the Bears, if you look at the first three games, I believe they averaged less than four and a half yards per play. And then the past two games, they've averaged almost seven yards per play. What's changed? DJ Moore. I think that's where <laughs> it uh, starts, and that's probably where it ends in terms of the changes, big picture-wise. But what you're seeing from Justin Fields after a rough first three games, he started to put everything together against Denver. You saw three really good quarters, one not-so-good quarter there, and then it was a complete game from Fields in the offense against Washington, where they had that game-winning drive at the end of the fourth quarter to seal the game, to put Washington away, and to leave nothing in doubt. And the way that this offense has gotten its identity, or at least been able to carve out its identity and get things gearing closer to being on track, because we're not going to say that they're there at one and four right now, is getting the ball in the hands of the team's best playmaker. I know that when I covered Minnesota, that was the theme, get the ball to Justin Jefferson. Here in Chicago, it's no different. It's just get the ball to DJ Moore. They've got a really solid run game right now. They're dealing with injuries, but they've been able to run the ball well to take some of that pressure off Justin Fields, who this year isn't running nearly as much. But they're making plays in the pocket. They're making some plays out of the pocket. And that's something that this offense hopes to build on as it continues to form its identity and that identity being centered around its best offensive player. Yeah, their best offensive player is DJ Moore and Justin Fields. And the Vikings' best offensive player is Justin Jefferson. There's chances that he may not play this upcoming Sunday. If you are the Chicago Bears defense or the Vikings offense, how do you prepare for, for such a big loss or such a big storyline going into Sunday? Yeah, I, ho I hope that hit hamstring heals quickly. It certainly sounds like he might miss some time. You hate to have a dynamic player like that not playing, yeah. but for the Bears, they might be able to catch a break in that sense. We know that Jordan Addison obviously has had a good start to the season. K.J. Osborne in that mix, too, and T.J. Hawkinson. They still have their fair share of weapons <laughs> that they're going to have to game plan for with or without Justin Jefferson. So I think this comes down to really banking on the health of your secondary. They were down a couple guys going into that Washington game, somehow managed to piecemeal the back seven together. So they were able to stay afloat um, against Washington. And, and I don't think that Washington necessarily took advantage of their top skill guys uh, in that loss to the Bears. So that helped. But you know that Minnesota probably isn't going to follow suit uh, to what the commanders did. But that's that's where it comes down, at least in terms of personnel that you want back there. You hope this is the week that Eddie Jackson can come back. You hope that Jalen Johnson can return from a hamstring injury. And they did designate Kyler Gordon to for return from injured reserve. We'll see if he ends up getting activated to the 53-man roster. He broke his hand in week one against Green Bay, had surgery. But I've seen him in the building without a cast on his hand. So it's good news for the Bears, but they still have their, their work cut out for them with the amount of weapons that Kirk Cousins has to work with and a pass rush that seems to be trending in the right direction of generating pressure that's getting home on the quarterback. But this offensive line for the Vikings is it's vastly different from the Washington offensive line and one that we know can protect Kirk Cousins pretty well.
Yeah, and, and speaking of protecting Kirk, that's the number one goal because when you have a guy in Justin Jefferson that may not be 100%, you're going to have to give your quarterback extra time. Granted, the Bears only have seven sacks for, on the season, so it gives the Vikings a little bit of hope. But I want you to put on your Vikings hat for this next question. I know you cover the Bears, but I'm going to have you rewind back and just think from the Vikings offensive standpoint. How do you, I guess, just find ways to make plays on this Bears defense that's still trying to figure it out? Yeah, it's it requires creative thinking in the way that you dial up pressures. And we heard Matt Eberflus today say that, you know, going into this mini bye week that they had, they were going to self-scout the defense and try to figure out ways that they can get more creative with play calling, more creative ways to use their personnel. And maybe that's dialing up some more blitzes, more exotic looks. We saw the beginning of that against Washington. And Eberflus said on Monday that he might be, you know, open to the idea to hire a senior defensive assistant, an analyst, somebody to look forward on opponents. And who knows if that ends up taking shape this week, if that's something that's going to pay dividends against Minnesota. But what we're seeing with Eberflus now, having called the defense since Alan Williams, uh, you know, his resignation earlier this season, mm -hmm. but that started before it started week two in the Tampa Bay game. Eberflus, this is, is he's getting more comfortable getting back into that role. And obviously these players are getting more used to the head coach calling the defense and knowing what to expect and what role they might be utilized in. And I think you're seeing consistently on a week to week basis, it might not be much, but the pressure rates are going up. And what you saw five sacks mm -hmm. the other night against the commanders, two of those came from guys that aren't on the defensive line. It came from TJ Edwards first, and then Greg Stroman jr. The cornerback, um, you want to be able to generate pressure with your front with your four down linemen that's the philosophy of this mm -hmm. defense that is how it was built but they've had to find other ways to get home and what we saw against Washington what they're going to try to do against the Vikings is utilize that same strategy to chip away and create pressure and then eventually be able to wear down the offensive line the unit up front blocking uh, in front of Kirk Cousins to try to get home to him as well. My last question for you is, is there a stat or a, a column that you're following that you could probably say that's going to be the outcome of this game on Sunday? I think what the Bears want to see is Justin Fields continue on this trend of fourth quarter mistake free games. Gotcha. What we saw against Washington was a start of something new for Fields. There was no fourth quarter turnover. There was no costly interception at the end of the game. There was no moment that made you think, man, they're going to blow it again. Um, being able to continue on that trend, if you're the Bears, if you're this coaching staff, knowing that you're putting Fields in position where he can succeed, that, of course, goes back to DJ Moore and getting the ball in his hands. And, you know, even if he isn't facing single coverage the way that Justin Fields said he spotted so many times against Washington, still being able to get the ball in his hands. Because what we know is that he is a yak monster, 141 <laughs> yards after the catch. That's a big reason why they wanted to bring him into this offense to be able Able to give Fields that quick option, whether it's on an out route, a hitch route, something in the flat, and then allowing DJ Moore to pick up those extra yards with the speed that he has. I'd be very curious to hear what Vikings defensive backs think about uh, going against him after next Sunday's game, because very clearly that speed has been a lethal weapon. He knows when to bring it out and just how effectively to use it. He did it against Washington. That's what the Bears are going to hope he's able to do again going forward in week six. One thing we both know is that Sunday's game is a must win for both teams. Neither one of those teams want to finish this year in last place in the NFC North. Courtney, you're always first place in Minnesota's hearts. I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you.